Well, hi at BookTube. Bill Rutenberg here with the Rutenberg Library. Wanted to come to you today with my February TBR. What am I planning to read in February? Or what I'm currently reading. So this would, this could almost be like a Friday Reads, almost, or a Saturday Reads. So um, what am I reading? What do I plan on reading for the month of February? So I got a lot in store. I've got some things that I've been working on, like over the long haul. And then I've got some things that I just started that'll be real fast reads. It's, it's kind of a combination here. So I am going to start with one of the books that I am enjoying the most. And I've talked about this one before because I've been working on it for what seems like forever. But again, it's a monster sized book. So give me a little bit of slack on that because uh, I'm trying to mix in other books at the same time. But I am starting to make some headway. I, I, uh, I passed the halfway point this morning. And so I'm thinking the second half of this book's gonna go a lot faster than the first half, just because I'm making more of a um, effort to read it, more of a conscience effort to read it. Um, so anyway, this is Centennial by James Mishner. Now, um, those of you that have followed the channel for the long haul, been here all three years I've been here, or if you just you know got here not that long ago, uh, this has become one of my missions. And uh, there's other people out on BookTube who have been trying to read the collected works of certain authors. In my last video, I talked about I'm also trying to read the collected works of Stephen Ambrose. And uh, I've been working on that. And actually, I, I need to purchase his third book that he, that he wrote about, oh goodness, what was it about? Was it about West Point, I think? I think it was. Don't quote me on that. I don't have it. I don't own it. That's why I'm not 100% sure. Going to have to go out and buy that one. But uh, anyway, that's going to be one of my next books of Stephen Ambrose. But for this month, and I've been working on this, ooh, I think I started this uh, nine months ago, maybe eight months ago. I mean, it's been little by little, but over the last month, I've like made some huge strides in it. And uh, keep in mind, I also put it I put it off to the side for quite a while. That's another reason it's taking me so long. Um, if I was only reading this, I could get through it in a month. Easy. Um, but anyway, very, very good book. This is all about, uh, as Mishner's books always go, or, or a lot of his books anyway, he takes an area and he goes from the beginning of time all the way towards the present. And in this one, he is focused on Centennial, Colorado. And so this is basically, um, I'm actually viewing it more of a history of the West with, you know, Colorado being the, the focal point. And I have enjoyed this absolutely just, I, I can't praise it enough. I've enjoyed this so much. It is absolutely awesome. Um, we read a couple weeks back, I was in the part on the fur trappers, the fur trade, and then it got into, it tied into the next, uh, chapter tied into relations with the Native Americans. So it was all about like the, the Indian wars and stuff. And the chapter that I got into yesterday is now talking about, um, or, or no, it was this morning, excuse me, uh, is talking about the cattle drives and, and, uh, they're bringing the cattle from Texas up to the, you know, what will be some major cattle ranches on the, so it's, it's all about the cowboys, essentially, and um, it is just so good. He weaves such an awesome narrative with so many different storylines, bringing them all into, again, one place as the central focal point, but he's hitting all these major topics in history. I'm absolutely loving this book. I took a history class in college that was the history of the West, and we had to read um, some, uh, excuse me, nonfiction books. One was about the fur trade. One was about the cattle drives and one was about, what was the other one about fur trade, cattle drive? Oh, the mining industry. And it is going to be my guess that he's going to probably hit the mining industry again. He did hit it already with the gold rush that came to the area. Um, but I, I bet he hits it again. So anyway, reading that, absolutely loving it. I am on page 457 and it is a 900 and what 909 pages long it's a it's a chunky monkey it is a march of the mammoth and say uh speaking of march of the mammoths that's probably when it'll get finished is my guess 
Um, if I was only reading this, I could get it done this month with ease, but I'm just reading little chunks at a time. So I'm guessing this one will go through March and then the next Mishner. So this is actually the book I started last year. I meant to get it finished last year and didn't. And um, that was my Mishner for 2022. My Mishner for 2023 is Hawaii. So that'll be my next one I pick up after this. But that'll, like I said, that'll probably be next month is my guess. Um, here's a book I started. Uh, did I start it yesterday or did I start it on? I, I may have started it January 31st and read the introduction. And then I got chapter one started yesterday and then I finished it today. Um, this is a book that Steve Donahue is doing a read along with. And um, I contacted him and said, hey, when you start in that, I, I found a new copy at the at Books Revisited. It's in wonderful shape. It's like brand new shape. Um, I mean, it's absolutely awesome. Got a slight bend in the, in the uh, spine. But other than that, I mean, it's still nice and shiny. Look at the corners on that. It's nice. And then look at the look at the the cover. I think that's pretty awesome. The cover there. But anyway, uh, got this started. Barbara Tuckman, a distant mirror, the calamitous 14th century, and it's basically a history of the Middle Ages, based in one family, one area. Uh, and I don't even know how to say it for sure. I need to look it up. Uh, C O U C Y S. Uh, the Cousies. Is that right? Anyway, I, like I said, I just finished the first chapter. Absolutely uh, am enjoying it. This will probably... T I, I'm not going to be able to keep up with Steve's uh, read-along. So me and Brian, we are going to pick away at this thing. I think he's going to try to do a chapter a, a, a day. I don't know if I'll be able to keep up with that because I'm doing all these other books. But I'm, I'm going to try to you know pick through this through the month of, of uh, February and I wanted to do that so that I could listen in on Steve's um, videos that he does and you know just kind of have an idea of what he's talking about and maybe even drop some comments and give my ideas on it uh, not that they're really worth anything but <laughs> I can I can participate at least for my long distance here I can I can participate I, I won't be able to keep up with them there's no way this this book is it's is really good I'm enjoying the narrative but it it's a slow read for me. I have to take a little bit more time with it. So um, it's, it's going to take me a while. It'll probably take me through March to end up getting it finished. And maybe even longer than that, depending on everything else I'm reading. It's one of the pains of reading. I, I read a ton of books all at one time. I know Peg was talking about this on her channel. Um, and some people, you know, like she said, some people kind of disagree with that. And I mean, we each have our own methods. And so with my methods, I sometimes it takes me forever to get big books done because I get distracted by all these others. But also, you know, that goes with being a mood reader. I, I pick up different books at different times. Sometimes I just don't feel like reading nonfiction, no matter how much I love it. Sometimes I just need some, some uh, fiction work. So speaking of fiction work, let's get into Agatha Christie because um, that's been a mission of mine. I've talked to you about that. It's another author that I started to read last last year, 2022, in March Mystery Madness. And I read, and then there were none. And I really liked that book. I think it was last year. Maybe it was two years ago. Anyway, I really liked that book. And um, so Peg and Martine over at the History Shelf, they decided they were going to do uh, Peg had not read the Miss Marple books from Agatha Christie. She'd read some other ones, but not the Miss Marples. And so they were going to, they had planned to do a Marple a month. And so they're picking in order that they were published. They're picking one Marple per month. And then they're doing a video at the end to discuss the book. Thoroughly enjoying listening to theirs. They just put up their, their video yesterday. Go check that out over at Peg's channel. Um, she she finished the moving finger. Well, I finished that one back in December. So because uh, we were we started in October, November, and then December. But she, uh, her and Martine got real sick, and they didn't get it done in in December. So they did it for January. So my plan, long story short, here my plan was to read one Marple a month with them, and then I was going to read, uh, and I started buying the Hercule Perot books, and so last month. I read uh, the first one, the affair, the mysterious affair at Styles. 
thoroughly enjoyed it. I really, really love the style of writing in the Hercule Perot books. Uh, highly, highly recommend them. So this month, and I just got it started yesterday, read the first, what, 47 pages of the book, and it is The Murder on the Links. And I am really enjoying this one. Um, Hercule Perot got a letter from a guy in, uh, was it France, I believe, and uh, says, hey, I need you to come here immediately. I got some issues that only you can solve. And he gets there, and when he finally finds the house, he gets there, and the guy's dead. So we have a murder mystery on our hands. And um, I just, I really like how these read. Um, it's just really good stuff. So been reading that. Now, last month, um, like I said, Peg and Martine were reading the moving or uh, yeah, the moving finger, and I had already read that in December. So I only read one Agatha Christie. So what I planned to do was read two, and then I got sidetracked and didn't read the second one. So this month I plan on reading three Agatha Christies. So I'm going to read Murder on the Links for my one Hercule Perot, and then. They just started, or they're getting started today, maybe. Um, the Miss Marple, the next one in the Miss Marple series, uh, A Murder is Announced. I'm super excited about this because Martine says this is one of the best ones. She absolutely loves it. And uh, this was a, out of a box set that I got. That's kind of a neat, you know, neat covers. But uh, anyway, A Murder is Announced. I won't start this one until I am finished with this one. But I do plan on reading reading this so that I can, you know, join it, not join in, but watch that video, their, their collaborative video, and I'll know what they're talking about. They've also been doing a pretty awesome thing with going and watching the TV series. And uh, I can't think of the actor, actresses that play Miss Marple in the English, you know, like the BBC series. Uh, but um, I have been watching... Geraldine McEwen, that's the one I like. I, I like those those movies, and uh, I plan on, I found it on my Hoopla account. Uh, it is available to rent, and so when I get finished with this, I will watch the Geraldine McEwen. Uh, one of these days, I'll watch the other one, but I, I like Geraldine McEwen for some reason. Um, the other Agatha Christie, so I'm going to read three this month to make up for only me reading one last month, but this is not going to be out of either one of those series. This is one of her other uh, books. This is By the Pricking of My Thumbs. And I found this, uh, where did I find this? I found this at the Jesse James Antique Mall and got it for, what, a couple bucks? Is that what it was? And of course I don't see it on there, but I think it was just like two or three bucks. And a uh, nice hardback edition. Do have a little bit of a rip on the cover, but that's that's okay. They're These are old and... Uh, well, the pages aren't too badly discolored, but anyway, it's an old book, but it's in good shape. I mean, it's, it'll be able to stand up to a lot of reads. Really excited about that. So I'm going to read that as the third book to make up for last month's, um, last month's Missing Agatha Christie. So another thing that I picked up that uh, I, got, I got it on a book haul a while back, um, been... October maybe, and um, I found this, and, and then after watching uh, Peg and Martine's video this morning, I went and dug it out, and I was like, you know what, I'm going to keep this by the nightstand, and I am going to read the little segment, the couple three pages for each book. When I get done reading them, I'm going to go read out of this, and this is uh, the new bedside bathtub and armchair companion to Agatha Christie. And it's basically just a collection of summaries of every book that she wrote. And they've got it, they've got the books all in um, chronological order that they were published. So I found that to be really cool. Um, but it's just a, you know, it's just a little summary of each of the stories. And I actually picked it out because I thought maybe it would it would talk about on, on Peg's video and Martine's video, they talked about, um, you know, when the moving finger was written, what was going on with Agatha Christie that, um, cause this was a question I had when I was reading the book, why did Miss Marple come in like three quarters of the way through the book? Why wasn't she there for most of the book? And she only has like a tiny, tiny part. Was it just to put Miss Marple in the title? 
or was there a reason for that? Was there something going on? Was the publisher trying to sell more books? So she just kind of stuck her in there because I got that same exact feeling when I read this and, and you can ask my wife, I was like, this is just weird. Why, why would they say Miss Marple? It's not really even a Miss Marple book, but anyway, pulled this out thinking maybe they would have some stuff in here. It doesn't, but that's okay. I'll still go through and dig through it. Thought that'd be kind of fun. Um, let's see, what else am I reading? Oh, got to have a trash novel. So I got, uh, and I talked about this in the other video, Hard Case Crime. This is a uh, publisher that puts out uh, pulp fiction or pulp detective novels and uh, or crime novels. I enjoy them. They are, they are not Pulitzer Prize winners by any means whatsoever, but I really enjoy the stories and uh, they're fun reads. You can read them in an afternoon if you got enough time or two afternoons for like for me because I'm a slow reader but uh, thoroughly enjoy them I, I read the first one in the series by uh, Lawrence Block and so I'm going to pick up this one Lucky at Cards um, he handled cards like a master but could he handle her and so um, I'll read the back of this one on the mend after getting run out of Chicago professional card sharp Bill Maynard is hungry for some action but not nearly as hungry as Joyce Rogers, the tantalizing wife of Bill's latest mark. Together, they hatch an ingenious scheme to get rid of her husband. But in life, as in poker, the other player sometimes has an ace up his sleeve. So, nothing but a trash novel. Absolutely love it. Maybe this should be like a Garbogist read. I don't know. Um, plan on getting through it, though. All right, so... I think I told you in a previous video about um, I took my kids, my my uh, sixth graders, to our local public library. We are getting ready to do research projects, and then we're going to build uh, exhibit boards like the big tri, you know, the big tri boards that open up like that. Um, and they're going to put together projects dealing with the civil rights movement of the uh, 1900s, and uh, the. All the kids had their had their topics. Some of them are Martin Luther King. Some of them are doing their topics on sit-ins, marches, like the March on Washington or the Selma March, or, you know, they've all got different different topics. Well, anyway, while I was there, I was showing them, because kids just don't go to the library anymore, I was showing them how to use the library, how the stacks are all um, situated, talked about Dewey Decimal System and all that good stuff. And um, so I was going back and forth across the library, finding different things for the, helping the kids find their stuff. And I was in the young adults, young readers biography section. And uh, we were looking for it's either Rosa Parks or Martin Luther King. I can't remember. Um, one of the big names from the civil rights. And I saw this house divided the lives of Ulysses S. Grant and Robert E. Lee by Jules Archer. Now I have read Jules Archer before or I'm pretty positive I've, I have. I have a book in my collection somewhere that is a biography on Ho Chi Minh that I read, and I am almost positive. I probably should just look it up so I could be all the way positive, but uh, pretty positive Jules Archer was the, was the um, author, and I enjoyed the read. I had never read anything on Ho Chi Minh, and, I mean, just gave me some some good knowledge. And so I picked this up and this has been my, my uh, SSR read at school. When we read for 20 minutes every day with the kids, they get a free read. Um, so anyway, I've, I've been reading this, brought it home since I'm at home with my, my sick child. I thought maybe I'd read a couple chapters to keep up with the kids at school during SSR. So reading that, I will easily finish that in the month of uh, February. Another one that I am reading is uh, Beverly Nadeau, Out of Bounds, Seven Stories of Conflict and Hope. And uh, Beverly Nadeau uh, lived in South Africa. She wrote uh, children's fiction or uh, young, young, not young adult, but middle grade, upper elementary to middle grade fiction. Um, I read her book and I used to use it with my class before I kind of rearranged my, my uh, curriculum and stuff. Uh, we used to read uh, Journey to Joburg, which was all about um, the, the, um, apartheid in South Africa. And it was a really good look from a kid's point of view. The kids really liked that book. Uh, not a really hard read. We could get through it, but then we could take that and use it as a jump off point to researching other, um, things in history that were dealing with apartheid. 
And so um, I went, I, I was a big fan of Beverly Nadeau. I thought she did a great job. I went and bought for my classroom a whole bunch of her books for my classroom. And this was, <coughs> this is one of them that was in the stack. And they've been sitting in my classroom. I bought them and then I just got sidetracked and never came back to them. And I need to go back to them because I really like her work um, in children's uh, literature. But anyway, a lot of this, uh, I'll, I'll just read the back to you real fast. For almost 50 years, apartheid forced the young people of South Africa to live apart as blacks, whites, Indians, and coloreds. Uh, this unique, dramatic collection of stories by native South African and Carnegie medalist Beverly Nadeau is about young people's choices in a beautiful country made ugly by injustice. Each story is set in a different decade during the turbulent years from 1948 to 2000 and portrays powerful fictional characters who are caught up in a very real and often disturbing events. And um, I've, I've read the first chapter. Like I said, I need to read the next chapter, uh, try to at least get one, if not two chapters done today. Enjoying this book. She Her stuff is just really good, and it really gets to the point and opens kids' eyes to major, major situations around the world. Uh, and in particular, South Africa. And she, she does some books in other areas, but South Africa is the one where she centers most of them. Um, this was another book that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to begin to look at. I don't know when exactly, I'll, if, if it'll be towards the end of the month or maybe even into March, but it's on my uh, stack of, so my SSR books at school. I'm reading these two right now. And this is like the third book. So when I get done with these, I'm going to start on this one. But this is something our language arts teacher used in class. And she she had uh, suggested that I read this. And it's All But My Life by Gerda Wiseman Klein. And it's a, it's a memoir of her life during the Holocaust. And uh, it's supposed to be a pretty, uh, pretty powerful account. Um, pulls no punches. It, um, let's see... It says Gerda Wiseman Klein was born in uh, Bilsko, Poland, and forgive me if I'm mispronouncing these, I, I apologize, but Bilsko, Poland in 1924 now lives in Arizona with her husband, Kurt Klein, who as a U.S. Army lieutenant liberated Gerda Wiseman on May 7, 1945. The author of five books, she has received many awards and honorary degrees and has lectured throughout the country for the past uh, 45 years. One survivor remembers a production of Home Box Office and United States Holocaust Memorial Museum, was the winner of an Emmy Award and the Academy Award for Documentary Short Subject was based on All But My Life. And um, language arts teacher said this this pulls no punches. Uh, it is very graphic on just what they went through in the Holocaust. And after reading that other book by Eddie Jacu that I, I just got done reading on the Holocaust, I was like, yeah, I could... I could uh, definitely pick this up and start going through it. All right, so that brings us to the last three in the stack of what I'm going to be working on this month. Um, two of them for sure. One of them might be in March. It just kind of depends on how fast things go. But um, if you're not familiar with the big reading event that's being put together by Vin at Revenant Reads and several of us co-hosts, it is Historathon 2023. It's a wonderful reading initiative. Uh, trying to promote uh, nonfiction history reading. And we've divided the year into four segments, three-month segments. And uh, from January through March, we are focusing on prehistory to the year 500 AD. And so right now, I read a couple of books last, uh, last month on uh, that time period. And for this month, I am reading the, and I started this last month, so it's a carryover. I'm about, let's see, 133 pages in, and it's uh, 324 pages of text, and then several in the you know index and notes, but 324 pages of text. But uh, Cleopatra, A Life by Stacey Schiff. I'm a big fan of Stacey Schiff. I think she's an excellent writer. Um, this has been, I've been putting it on the, it's a good book. It reads well. It's It's not a hard read. Uh, it's just been put on the side table several times for other books I've been reading. And so it, it, uh, nothing wrong with it. If you're wondering why it's taking me so long, this could be easily read in a week. Um, it, it's that good. I just haven't focused on it. Now, 
the next three, four days, I'm going to try to heavily focus on this and see if I can knock it out. Maybe it'll stretch into a week, depending on, you know, all the other stuff. But anyway, highly recommend it. It's a good book so far. Now, um, keep in mind, I've never read anything on Cleopatra. So I am a, I am an open book to this. I have no other um, thoughts coming into the reading. I don't know anything on it. So when I get done with that, I am going to begin reading Egypt's Golden Couple, how Akhenaten and Nefertiti became gods on earth by John Darnell and Colleen Darnell. Now, this is a um, advanced uh, reader copy that Peg sent me. And so it is out. Uh, when did it come out? It came out November of 2022. So it's been out for a couple of months now. You can get this at your bookstores. Um, but I've heard nothing but good stuff about it. And I'm pretty excited about, you know, digging through this and reading it. Uh, so thank you to Peg for sending that to me. But again, it's all about this couple's life. So not much else to say on that. So that's going to be uh, one of my reads. And then if I get done with that, and it's it's very possible I could get done with it if I if I focused. The next one was from another stack of uh, possibilities. I showed a video on Historathon possibilities uh, that I found in my classroom at school. And this is Stonehenge Decoded by Gerald S. Hawkins in collaboration with John B. White. And uh, this was one of those... Um, archaeological finds or um, some, of, some of the archaeological digs that they did in that uh, National Geographic book that I talked about uh, in a previous video. This was one of them that was centered in on that. And I saw this book and I was like, you know what? I need to pick this up. It's, it's not very long. It's a total of 202 pages, but it's, it's got lots of pictures and stuff in it to, and diagrams to help and, and maps to help uh, explain what's going on, what they're talking about. So I'm hoping this will, there's another one there. I'm hoping this is going to, you know, just open my eyes to Stonehenge a little bit and just let me learn a little bit because I don't know much about it. So BookTube, that is my February list of books to read. Will I get through this? I'm not sure. I'm going to try a shorter month so that's going to play against me some of these will carry over but let me see if i can do a oh, it's not exactly a steep pyramid because i got to use two hands uh but that right there is my tbr for february 2023 um getting into almost the 30 minute mark getting close so i better start wrapping this up so my question to you is what do you plan on reading this february that's my plans what are you going to read? Um, thank you for watching. I, I, I hope you lasted this long. If you did, thank you. Um, but anyway, until next time, BookTube, happy reading.